What's poppin' plebeians? It's your boy JRAS, and today marks the first episode, or I guess uh, beginning video, to my movie review series, Movie Meter. We're gonna start this series by talking about the highly anticipated Shang-Chi, I believe that's how you say it, please don't cancel me Twitter, uh, <clears throat> Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Marvel's latest movie in their fourth phase of films. Now, I actually got to see this movie pretty early. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was lucky enough to weasel my way into a screening, believe it or not, but I decided to wait just so I could talk about the spoilers. In the spoiler section, of course, which I will mark when the time is ripe for, well, you know, spoiler talk. But until then, let me just give you a spoiler-free review. This movie is fucking amazing. It exceeded my expectations tenfold. Pun intended. Uh, where to begin? Uh, I guess the action. It is a Marvel film, so action does play a big role in it. You know, we want to see some guy getting punched in the face and then being sent flying across the stratosphere, past the sun, and then back to Earth, all in one shot. But man, seriously though, uh, all jokes aside, the combat it was really nice to look at. It started off pretty simply. You know, it was just hand-to-hand -hand stuff. I'm sure you've seen the trailer where Shang-Chi is fighting the guy on the train. You know, the Venom Punish Snake type guy with his fucking prosthetic metal arm. Except instead of a rocket arm, it's a sword arm. Pretty cool, to be honest, in the film. But as you can see, it was mostly hand-to-hand -hand stuff, no superpowers involved. But that changes as the film goes on. The main character, as well as the supporting cast, learn, you know, new abilities and stuff. It's kind of a hero's journey type situation where they get stronger as time goes on, which it's always nice to see. But it's done in such a good way that it's really enjoyable to watch. You know, you've got guys just punching each other in the faces at one point, and then if you fast forward an hour, you've got the main character just shooting fucking blue lasers out of his ash just jumping in the air doing triple backflips and landing on a guy and goomba stomping him to death it's well i mean not death you know it's marvel at best he's just breaking his spine like batman you know we can't kill anyone in marvel so nonetheless this is probably the best action in any marvel film it beautifully combines actual martial arts along with special effects and it's an absolute joy to look at speaking of looking at it the directing is also amazing there isn't any janky shots where it's like an earthquake is happening there are nice clear sometimes wide shots of the action and that's all Papa Jarass ever wanted, man. Finally, you don't see too many movies actually doing good direction for action. And it's just, ugh, mwah, chef's kiss, baby. Absolutely splendid. Now, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a bit. I've just been talking about the spectacle part of the film, you know, the big bangs, the big punches, the big booms, you know, the kind of shit Michael Bay would jack off to at night. But what about the story? Well, I'm happy to say that for a Marvel movie, the story is actually pretty fucking good. There are a multitude of antagonistic characters that are just really cool. I mean, for example, the main character, Shang-Chi's father, is awesome. I guess I should also take the time to mention that the casting is perfect. I think everyone was chosen for the best roles that they could have played. And the good guys of the story were pretty awesome too. Aquafina was absolutely hilarious. I didn't really know who she was before this, but now I absolutely love her. Of course, Simo Liu, the guy who literally plays the main character whose name is in the title of the film, that was an excellent pick as well. Honestly, it's just, ugh, everything about this film is just really good. But yeah, anyways, all of these characters and more are involved in a plot that consists around the Ten Rings that the title of the film also mentions, which are basically these ancient artifacts, possibly alien in nature, I don't really know, but they're strong and they can make big lasers that do big damage. Among a great deal of other stupendous magic tricks, such as walking on them as platforms. I'm sure the kids will love to see that one. I digress. Essentially, without getting too spoilery, the film revolves around how the Ten Rings are kind of corrupting the world, and mainly Shang-Chi's immediate family, especially his father, who are especially his father, who is an ancient, immortal warlord who literally found these things thousands of years ago. He's the Mandarin, by the way. I didn't know who that character was until the movie. I'm sorry, I'm not a massive fucking nerd. <clears throat> Sorry, I thought I heard something. Maybe the wind. Uh, anyways, no, but the story is honestly great. There are a bunch of different awesome locations that they go to, a bunch of different cities, a forest that moves itself. It's really cool, and there are a lot of fantasy elements that I really enjoyed, along with a slew of Asian culture and mythology references. But as time goes on and the movie nears its end, it all culminates into an amazing final battle essentially, which isn't really much of a spoiler. I mean, most Marvel movies end this way, but 
the final battle in Shang-Chi, it fucking blew my mind. It's like how in Bloodborne, you think the story is about just killing werewolves and other beasts, but in reality, there is something much bigger happening, and that's kind of the case in Shang-Chi. What happens at the end is not something you would expect to happen based on watching the trailers, and I was all there for it, man. I was so hyped in the theaters, and of course, because it was a Marvel film, everyone was like ear raping me, just, Whoa! I might have developed tinnitus after getting out that theater, but nonetheless it was worth it because that final battle was just something else, man. I can recommend watching this film for that scene alone. I mean, you can hardly even call it a scene. That lasted a while, and every second of that final battle was just fucking stupendous and stellar and just, oh god, it was amazing. There were parts that gave me chills, legitimate chills. And unlike other Marvel films where it's just the main character that does all the work, a lot of the side characters get some work in too. They help save the day. The team behind this film really thought of everything to make it as good as possible, and it paid off in the end. I can tell that they were really passionate about this. This film was so good that it could do well if it wasn't part of Marvel. This would be a phenomenal standalone film. In fact, I know this is going to be a controversial opinion, so please everybody put down your pitchforks. No need to get too angry, but I think I might like this film more than Endgame. I'm not sure yet, but it was so good. I implore you, if you haven't done so already, watch it and you might understand what I mean. It's action-packed, it's funny, it's got heart, and of course it has the final battle that I've been preaching about. That final battle is just, oh my god, it's so good. And speaking of that final battle, I'm going to talk about some spoilers that relate mainly to said battle. Skip to the timestamp now. Alright, spoilers. The fucking Eldritch Abomination versus the Ancestral Dragon Protection Spirit. That was fucking awesome. That came out of left field. I didn't see that shit coming. I just thought I was going to see some superheroes knocking each other out with big gloves or something. I mean, after all, you saw Abomination's fishy looking face in the trailer, so I thought we'd get some UFC matches going on. There was only one, but it was pretty cool. Aside from that, man, the final battle was amazing. Like, demons of versus good. It was a bunch of other characters fighting as well. Like I mentioned, the side characters were doing some work. Aquafina's character, which I can't remember her name. I just know her as Marvel Aquafina girl. I think her name was like Katie. <laughs> it was dope as hell when she shot the arrow through that thing's neck, man. The big bad demon got a taste of its own semen. Well, not really, but you know, I thought it sounded cool because it rhymed. Aside from parts of the story being confusing, I really have nothing else to complain about, so that wraps up that section. So, yeah, with all of this in mind, and with my mind being completely firm that this is probably one of Marvel's best, if not best, film in the entire existence of the MCU, I dutifully give Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings a more than solid 9 out of 10. This film absolutely deserves the rating. Every second of it was fun and exhilarating, and I was never bored throughout. What more could you ask for in a Marvel action flick? With all that said, that about wraps up this video. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, share this with your friends perhaps if you thought it was a good review. Follow my socials, follow my Twitch where I will be streaming uh, sometimes. Probably not too much though because I'm a dumbass. And yeah, this has been your boy JRAS. Hopeful for the future of Marvel and really excited to see more of Shang-Chi and his character. Signing off. Peace. Thank you.